Well, hey there, and welcome to my channel. I'm Crafty Kathy. I'm the owner and creator of Kids Vintage Farmhouse in beautiful Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I am so happy and thankful that you stopped in to craft and spend a little time with me today. Guys, I have been working on a project for about three and a half days now. I don't know what it is about us DIYers that will see something that's totally out of our league or something that we've never done before. And we're like, I can do that. I can do it. Well, y'all, you get to see me in action as I'm creating this thing. And it's quite funny. I'm going to tell you where I got my inspiration from and about this wonderful channel that I have been watching and she amazes me. We'll talk about her in just a minute when we get into the video. So I'm not going to keep blabbing, but I do want to say thank you to one of my special subscribers. Now, I've been telling Miss Elizabeth that made this for weeks that I'm going to show her off and I just haven't had a chance to put it in a video. But look what she made me. This is the cutest thing. And does this not look like my little Yorkie, Roxy? And Roxy don't like her. This one's name is Stella. I named her that. And we always mess with Roxy. We stick her in front of Stella here or stick Stella down in front of her. And she's like, because she thinks it's another Yorkie trying to take over her kingdom or whatever. I don't know. But I need to ask Miss Elizabeth if she sells these because they're very substantial and like well made. The fur is unlike any fur that I've seen before. And I just want to thank you, Miss Elizabeth. I love Stella and we are having a ball with Stella and Roxy. So I'm not going to keep blabbing. I just wanted to show her off for a minute. Let's get into today's video. <laughs> this is the inspiration for my very first project. I've been watching a lady named Monica on Up All Night DIY. I'm going to leave her information in the description box and in the comments because I want y'all to go show her some love. I absolutely fell in love with this guy when I saw him. Y'all know how much I love my vintage Halloween. Well, she created Pumpernick. He is a jack-o'-lantern jack-in-the-box. And when I saw him, I knew I had to recreate him. Now, I don't want to copy him exactly, but I did take inspiration from him. However, I came up with a whole backstory. Mine is going to be Pumpernick's cousin from Tennessee, and he's kind of crazy about moonshine. He gets a little wild sometimes. I've got a whole story I've got to tell you while I'm doing the DIY. But first, let me show you what you're going to need to create him. You're going to need some clay. I grabbed this Crayola air dry clay because it was cheap. Please don't use it. I'm going to tell you what to use. Then you're going to need one of these floral cones. I grabbed two because I wasn't sure what size I was going to use. I used the smaller one and it's from Dollar Tree. You're going to need just a little foam pumpkin from the Dollar Tree. And you're also either going to need some type of a crate or a box that he's going to sit in That's going because he's a jack-in-the-box. So I just used an old crate, okay? Now, what the way that I figure that I went wrong is Monica uses the Crayola Model Magic. I used Crayola Air Dry Clay, and it was the worst clay I've ever used in my life. I just have to throw that out there. You guys that watch me know that I like the DOS or the DAS clay, but I thought, hey, this is really cheap, and it was on Amazon, and I could remember that she used Crayola in her video, so I was thinking that I got the right thing, but it wasn't. My jack-o'-lantern fell apart two times, like absolutely a puddle of clay fell apart two times, but the third time's a charm, so let me show you how I made him. After I created a mess two times, the third time I was like, okay, I'm going with the clay that I know will not fail me. I know that DOS is a little bit more expensive. I think it's about nine bucks for two pounds, which isn't a lot more expensive, but it's well worth the peace of mind knowing that your project's going to come out right and you're not going to have to recreate it. So I ended up using DOS and this is what I did. You have to move it around and just kind of warm it up in your hands for a few minutes. And then I grabbed my brayer so that I could roll out a piece that's going to be big enough to fit over my little pumpkin there. 
Then I took that whole sheet of clay that I just did and literally laid it on the top of that foam pumpkin. I took the stem out, by the way, laid it on top of that whole foam pumpkin, and I just kind of used my hands to shape it and form it over the top of the pumpkin. Now, when I used that Crayola clay, it was very, very hard to shape it and maneuver it and mold it. But with my trusty old DOS clay, it was so much easier. Like I could literally see the grooves of that pumpkin whenever I would push down. And so it was so easy to make the grooves. I kind of rolled it around, made sure that I had good connection. Now, it doesn't matter if you don't cover up that whole bottom because that part's going to be covered up anyway, the part that's still orange down there. The rest of it, you just use your hands, and if you need to use maybe like a little squirt of water or even wet your hands, do that, and that will help you to shape it and put all those little pumpkin ribs in there. I also took the end of a paintbrush, like a smaller paintbrush, and used that to go down inside those ribs. That way they would be really accentuated, and you could really tell that it's a pumpkin's head. I worked on that just for a few minutes, and this is what I came up with when I was finished with that. Now we're going on to make his body. I grabbed some more of the clay, and I kneaded it around in my hands. I grabbed my brayer, and I'm just going to roll it out. Then I'm just going to take my clay, and I'm going to lay it over the top of that floral foam. Um, remember I told you I got that floral foam from the Dollar Tree. I cut off the bottom, maybe two-thirds of it there, and all I'm doing is using my hands to make sure that it's all covered. I would squirt a little bit of water every once in a while just to kind of smooth out the clay to make sure it didn't have a lot of wrinkles or bumps in it, but that also kind of gives it character if you think about it. And then I would kind of roll it around on that wax paper there so that it would get on there and have a really good, nice adhesion. Then I took three toothpicks and I stuck them down inside that floral foam. And I'm literally going to just stick that in the bottom of the pumpkin. And so now we have the head of our jack-o'-lantern and his body once I put it down on top of there. The next thing I'm going to do is create his little arms, and I just took one larger piece of clay and rolled it out, and then I'm just going to cut it in half, and I'm going to keep the hat. Now, remember I told you that I made my pumpkin before, and all of it cracked. The hat was okay, though. I'm going to keep his hat that I originally made, but the rest of it, I had to totally redo. I would just squirt a little bit of water on the ends of these, which are his arms, and to kind of round it off to make it look like little hands. And then I would use like those skewers from Dollar Tree because they're a little bit longer than the toothpick. I stuck it down in the sides, and then I stuck one in the side of the pumpkin so that his arm would have something to to kind of grab it up top because you want his arms to go up beside his head like a little jack-in-the-box would do, like his arms are up in the air like, boo, you know what I mean? Like he's popping up out of, out of his little box. So I found it was easier to stick those little skewers in the side of the pumpkin just to hold the very top of his little arms up so that they wouldn't fall out. And I did that for both arms. I cut the ends of the skewers off and I used that to attach the bottom part of his arm. And then I would cut the, another piece of the skewer off and stick that in the side of that pumpkin to hold the very tops of what would be his hands, I guess you could say. So it looks like the little jack-o'-lantern is going boo and sticking his little hands up in the air. And this hat that you see here, like I said, the first two times I tried to make this guy, I did make his hat with the Crayola air dry clay, 
and it didn't crack, thank God. So I'm just, like I said, I'm just keeping that. However, I did add three toothpicks to the top of his head to hold his hat in place. I took a bottle cap and I pushed it into the top of the clay, which is going to be his eyes. And then I took a clay tool that I have, which just has like a little rounded edge on it. And I pushed that into the place where his nose would be. Then I just rolled out two small, thin pieces of clay to go around where I just put the little bottle cap around his eyes because we want him to be very carnival-like and almost, it reminds me of like Tim Burton, Nightmare Before Christmas. That's the kind of guy that I want to recreate. Now, remember I told y'all that Monica's pumpkin's name is Pumpernick. Well, mine is Bumper Dick. And I don't mean that in an ugly way, so don't think that I'm trying to cuss on my channel or trying to talk ugly on my channel, but I did have to come up with a name that rhymed with Pumpernick. And the whole backstory came because when mine first, when I created the first one and he fell apart, I was like, he just looks like an old drunk from a bar stool. And that's how I got the whole backstory. So, I guess mine is his cousin from Tennessee, Bumper Dick. And like I said, don't take that in the wrong way, but there's not a lot of names that rhyme with Nick. And I know Dick rhymes with Nick, so I was like, that's the only name I could think of. So, to make his mouth, I made two long pieces, like snake-like formations, and I brought them up because I wanted him to have a really big like cheesy grin, you know, like a Cheser cat. You know what I mean? Like just a big old cheesy huge grin. So I brought his mouth up together and so far this is Bumper Dick. Now I know from using the DAS clay in the past that one of the best ways that you know that that clay is not going to crack, which it doesn't crack easily, but it is to go ahead and paint it when it's wet. You can do that with the DOS clay. So that's exactly what I decided to do. I wasn't going to take a chance with this guy cracking anymore. I mean, I already had two failed attempts where he was cracking and just, you know, it just fell into like a puddle of clay. And I was like, that's not going to happen again. Now, Monica uses all these neat colors and I did use acrylic paint, which y'all know I always use chalk paint, but I used acrylic paints because that's what she used. I tried to find the exact colors that she used. I went to Hobby Lobby, and they didn't have any of them. I don't know what the deal was. So the color that I ended up painting him is called Pumpkin, and it's by what I'm assuming is Hobby Lobby's name brand. It's called Anita's. That's the name of their acrylic paint and I couldn't find the summer sunset that she used and the burnt orange all the neat colors she had and she also blends her colors and I'm not used to doing that so I was a little bit afraid to blend I didn't want to mess him up because I'd already messed him up two times before you know and I just wanted to make this little jack-in-the-box so bad. I didn't want to, like, take the chance to totally destroy him. So here I'm just taking that acrylic paint by Anita's, and it's called Pumpkin. I went around his head. I did the tops of his hands because he's going to have on a jacket. He is a very fashionable man, even though he's a drunk and he likes moonshine. He also likes to chase ladies. But we won't talk about that right now. I got a new set of paint brushes at Hobby Lobby, which there's nothing like getting a new set of paint brushes. I absolutely love to get those. And I went around his nose. If there, if I ever messed up and kind of got the color on his lips or like where his teeth are going to be or somewhere where it's not supposed to be, I just waited till it dried and then went over it with the correct color. So his whole head is orange, and the little tops of his hands is going to be orange. And his nose area is orange for now. 
The next thing that I did was I painted his little eye sockets white. I painted what is going to be his teeth, so the whole area inside his lips is white. And then I painted the very front part of him white, like his body down there. And I did the same thing here too. If there was any part where I messed up and got the paint somewhere where it's not supposed to be, I would wait for it to dry and then just paint over it the correct color. The next thing I did was painted his hat black and I'm just using like the apple barrel black paint. Nothing special, it's just acrylic paint in the little bottles that's like the apple barrel. The very next thing that I did is take a color by folk art called pewter gray. I could not find the rain gray that she used and I went around his eyes and then I also went around his lips with this. Now it is a darker gray that I'm using but I did like the contrast along with the black and the orange and the whites. I thought that it really did look good with all those other colors. As I went around his eyes and went around his lips, I was going really slow. Like I have the video really sped up right now and it almost looks like I'm in just regular motion. That just shows you how careful I was trying to be as I was painting around all these little smaller areas. But it's no big deal if you do get paint somewhere where you don't want to get it. Just kind of let it dry and then just paint right back over it with the color that you want. Then I took the apple barrel color that's just regular black and I started painting his coat. I left a little area up at the very top white because he's going to have cuffs. This is going to be like a little nice evening jacket, you know. And he's got like the white sleeves that are emerging from underneath. When I got up to the front area of his jacket, what I did was take a smaller, like thinner paintbrush and make almost like a V. You see how I'm doing this? Just kind of almost like I'm making an arrow or something. I did that on both sides and you see how it just created what looks like his little jacket being open. And then I used that very thin paintbrush again to make little stripes down the front. I started off wanting to create my eyes just like Monica does. And I used like those little dabbers or daubers, whatever you call them, that I got off of Amazon and I put it in that pewter gray. Monica does the gray and then like a smaller white and then a gray, I think is how she does it but I got an idea to make bumper dick a little bit different. And then I also, still using that smaller paintbrush, I created just little eyebrows for him and then a very, very thin brush to create his teeth. I mean like a very thin brush to create his teeth. I just went across with the line and then I'm just going to go straight up and down for his teeth. I got a really cool idea on what I wanted to do for his eyes and kind of make him more Crafty Kathy style. But in the meantime, I had to correct his smile and his eyes. I had just kind of made a mess. So don't feel like you're a total failure if you literally have to just do several things over and over. It's just like, you know, you learn as you go. And this is the first time I've done this. And I really had to give myself grace on this because I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to stuff like this. And I just had to keep reminding myself, Kathy, this is the first time you've done it. Just chill. One of my amazing subscribers, Paige, and she has become a really good friend of mine, sent me this mold and it's got buttons in it. And you guys know how I am about my buttons. And the little kit also came with this UV resin where you put the little light over it and it like cures within seconds. Well, like I said, I wanted Bumper Dick to be a little bit different than Pumper Nick. I want to make his eyes button, y'all. I mean, how more Crafty Kathy can you get than that? So these molds are really cool. I'll put these in the description box below. 
I really like these and I don't think they're very expensive. So you just go inside the little mold with your resin and then you set the UV light over it for two minutes and it cures. And then you kind of flip over your little mold and give it another two minutes on the other side and it's totally finished. Well, y'all know me and my buttons. I got a little carried away and I made like 20 million buttons, what it seemed like. And I started thinking, hey, I could paint these and put these on different places on Bumper Dick. So I made some orange, some of them were the pewter gray, some of them were the lighter gray, and then some of them were black. I just made different colors on different sizes in case I could use them in this DIY or even if I wanted to use them later on other DIYs. So this was the very last time that I made his smile. It took me three attempts and I finally got smart and started using my little detail paint brushes. These things are lifesavers and they're in my Amazon store in case you want some. I use these all the time in my DIYs and it just made it so much simpler to go down and make his teeth that way. Then I took a brush that was just like straight across and it's a little bit thicker and I dipped it in that lighter gray and I went down the top to make his little lapels. And then I changed up my brush to a little fine one again and made two little dots on the sides of his cuffs which represent tiny buttons. Now this button mold that she sent me has large buttons, medium size, and small ones. I took the medium ones and that's what's gonna go inside his eyes and those are painted with that pewter gray. I love the original that she created, the Pumpernick, and he gives me like a Halloween, like a circusy feel. And that's what I wanted mine to look like too. I wanted him to have that circusy Halloween feel. That's the only way I can put it into words. I also want him to have vibes that's kind of like Tim Burton, Nightmare Before Christmas type vibes. Um, most of you have probably seen that movie, but if not, that's kind of, you know, what I'm going off of also in my mind. I placed the cutest little orange button right where his little jacket comes together and I think that really kind of topped him off. You know what I mean? It just gave him that little something special and since it's the button, it's very Crafty Kathy. Since the button was orange, the four little dots inside the button, I just painted those black so it would have a little offset. I placed a smaller button inside that largest gray one and I painted those white and those are gonna be the inner portion of his eyes. I measured the four sides of the boxes and then I cut down four pieces of paper to go. I used paper that I got from Hobby Lobby and I love, absolutely love this Harlequin black and white style also the striped. I think it's very vintage and all I used was my handy dandy glue stick and I think that that's going to be plenty enough to keep these papers on there the way that they're supposed to go. Now I just placed one on each side. And for the top of the box, the part where Bumper Dick's going to be sitting, I painted it black. And remember, the bottom portion of the box needs to be open. So whether you use a crate like I did, or if you're gonna use a regular box, that bottom portion needs to be open, and you'll see why in just a second. I drilled a hole in the middle of the box, and I cut down a dowel that I get in a pack at Walmart. And this is where Bumper Dick's going to go on that and I just made it long enough to where it could just stand up inside the bottom of that box, if that makes sense. You see how I did there? And I added a little bit of glue so that it would be supported a little better. And then I just slid Bumper Dick right over the top of that. And that will help him to be very stable and not, you know, move around. Because if you're gonna take the time to make this, you definitely don't want it to get messed up. 
I couldn't figure out what to put on the front. She had made these beautiful little, um, like, round pictures that she had printed, and my printer was acting crazy, so I just decided to make some rosettes. They are two inches wide, and all you do is fold them back and forth, back and forth, and then you glue the two ends together and bring them around into a circle. I always put a little glue in the very center part of my circle and hold it together. That way my rosettes will hold their shape and stay small. And I put this rosette on the very front of the box. Then in this part, I was a little indecisive. I wanted to place something around the top portion of the box to kind of disguise where that paper meets the box. So I took just different colors of pipe cleaners, like the gray and the orange, the orange and the black, and I just twisted them together, almost like a candy cane effect, to see which color that I liked the best. And I wasn't crazy about the color of orange in the pipe cleaner I had because it was a brighter orange than what Bumper Dick was, but it's okay. In the end, that's the one I, I decided to use. I just seemed to like that black and orange combination, and I think it looks so much more better than the black and gray, you know, combination. And all I did, since this has a wire in it, is run it around the top of the box until the pipe cleaner stopped, and then I just added the other. And I had a little bit of an excess, and all I did was take my little cutters and cut that off. After much debate, I decided to take a very thin piece of ribbon and put that around the top part of his hat. I was going to use the pipe cleaners at first, but I decided I liked the ribbon so much better, and it's black and white striped. Then I took one of the small orange buttons, and I placed that right on the top and side of his hat, and I think that just really set it off. I couldn't really figure out what I wanted to put in the middle of the rosette. So in the end, I just chose one of the large buttons and I painted it orange and put little black dots in the center. I got these wooden pieces from Hobby Lobby in the woodpile section and they almost look like washers, like a wooden washer. And so what I did was I painted it black and I put it over the hole that I created in the side of the box. That is where the little crank for the jack-o'-lantern's gonna go. And so I just kind of disguised it with that little wooden piece there. And then I had to incorporate my husband's help on this. He got a large gauge of wire. I'm not really sure what size this is. And it was covered in black vinyl. He is an electrician, so he already had the wire on hand. And so I don't know what gauge it is but we shaped it like a Z and stuck it through that little hole on the side. I also bought that wooden spool at Hobby Lobby. They come in a pack of four. I painted it orange and put a piece of scrap paper around the middle of it, and then I stuck two little small plastic beads on the outside of it just for extra decoration. And then the very last thing that I did to top it all off was cut off just a tiny little sprig of a flower that I'm gonna put on his lapel and it's gonna be like a little flower corsage. Now he hasn't hit the moonshine yet, so he still looks nice and dashing. He's getting ready for an evening out. He's gonna be chasing the ladies. So he's gotta look hot. And he is more in depth than what I normally do on my projects, but I had so much fun making Bumper Dick. Thank you.
Since the first DIY took up so much time, I decided just to do one really quick one. I also got this decoupage paper from my friend Paige, and I absolutely love it. It's got a witch on the front of it, and she's a vintage witch. And then look at this beautiful frame. It originally came from the Family Dollar. I got it for just 50 cents, but I think she's going to fit perfect in that. Now, one of my projects today was very in-depth. This one is like two seconds, so don't blink because you'll miss it. I took the glass out and I took the inner little cardboard backing part out and I'm just taking my beadboard paint by DIY paint and I am just going to color this that beautiful off-white color. And lately, I have been using my glue stick, even though my decoupage papers and my napkins, because it's still glue, and it's very easy to put projects on with that. And also, if you don't want your projects to be permanent, it's a lot easier to get them off. Now, it did have a little bit of an overhang, so I took my little finger sander and just zipped that right off of there. I popped it right back in the frame, and she is gorgeous. Hey, if you stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to say thank you so much for stopping in and crafting and spending a little time with me. I hope that you like this video. I know it's very different from what I'm used to, but I just had to recreate my version of Pumpernick when I saw what Monica did. And please don't forget to go to Monica's channel. It's Up All Night DIY. I will leave it in the comments and in the description box because she deserves to have 10 million subscribers. She's amazing. And that reminds me too, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family. We would love to have you. There's always room for more. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up because it really helps me out on YouTube. It helps them to push my videos out there to people who've never seen me before, and I greatly appreciate y'all for doing that. And don't forget our new video times are Monday and Thursday at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And I sure do hope to see you in the next, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Okay, here's Roxy. Come here, Roxy. Let's see Stella. Here's Stella. Look at her grin. She grins. Say, there's Stella. There's Stella. Rosie. Rosie. There's Stella. There's Stella. Do you like Stella? Do you like Stella? Quit grinning. Look at her grin. Put your face up here so they can see you grin. You see so Stella? Uh -huh. <laughs> you see Stella? <laughs> Good. Here she Roxy. Look. Oh, Stella! Get away from her! Come here, Rocky! Get away from her! Look at her grin. Are you grinning at Stella? Are you? Why did you bite me? <laughs> Come here, Roxy. And if you did enjoy this video, here's one that I think you'll like that has very similar content. All you gotta do is just press on that video, and when this one is finished playing, it'll take you right to that one. So I will see you guys soon. God bless you and your families. I love you all.